Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we'll use all that we learnt in the last video on projectile motion to go through a question that you could see in your exam. This will help us hit the syllabus points up on the video page. Now, I'm not going to make this too easy, so we'll use a pretty tough question. But after that, I'm sure that you'll be able to tackle anything that could possibly be thrown at you. So let's get cracking. Let's say you've just finished your exams. And in that moment of joy, you run to the nearest cliff and throw your physics textbook into the air. The top of the cliff is 50 metres above the ground, and the textbook is thrown with a velocity of 20 metres per second, at an angle of 60 degrees above the horizontal. If the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 metres per second squared downwards, then A. Draw a diagram showing this information and the path of the textbook. B. Find the maximum height above the ground that the textbook reaches. C. Find the time that the textbook is in the air. D. Find the distance the textbook travels horizontally. And E. Find the final velocity of the textbook the instant before it hits the ground. And give all your answers to one decimal place. Alright, let's give it a go. The first part here, A, is the least physics-y of them all. It's just trying to find out whether you understand the information in the question. Even though you don't need to create the next Mona Lisa, it's good to make your diagram as neat as possible. Here's what it should look like. The key features to include are the height of the cliff, the initial velocity of the textbook, with its angle above the horizontal, and its path, which should look like part of a parabola. There we go, basically a free mark. All right, guys, before we can answer anything else, we have to start by splitting up the initial velocity into its horizontal and vertical components. And we do this by drawing in the velocity like this with the angle above the horizontal here. Then the horizontal component is this part and the vertical component is this part. Since they're perpendicular, we can use right angle trig, which tells us that the initial horizontal velocity, ux, is 10 meters per second. And the initial vertical velocity, uy, is 10 root 3 metres per second. Now, you can round the vertical velocity to 17.3 metres per second if you want, but I'd recommend using the exact value in your working, and only round it at the end. OK, so now we have the initial horizontal and vertical velocities. We can use the SUVAT equations to find what we're looking for. First, though, we'll define the upwards direction to be positive since we'll be working with vectors. In part b, we're asked to find the maximum height of the textbook. Since height is a displacement, we're looking for s. This is a vertical problem, since we're only looking for displacement in the vertical direction. So that means we also have the acceleration, which is negative 9.8 metres per second squared, since it's downwards. And we also have the initial velocity, which is 10 root 3 metres per second. Now, the last sneaky bit of information that we do have, in this case, is actually the final velocity. Since we're only looking at the part of the flight where the textbook moves up to its maximum height, the final velocity v for that section is its vertical velocity when it reaches this height, which is zero. This is because at the top of its flight, it's moving neither up nor down at that moment. This is very common for projectile motion questions. So, since we have v, u, and a, and we're looking for s, we use the equation v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Subbing in the values, we get 0 equals 300 minus 19.6s, which gives us s equals 15.3. Now, the last trick here is that s is only this distance here. So, to find the maximum height above the ground, we have to add the 50 metres here. Which gives us S equals 65.3 metres. OK, part C shouldn't take us too long now, since we've already done the splitting up of our initial velocity. Now, we're looking for how long the textbook is in the air, which is T. This kind of problem is also a vertical one, since we don't have enough information in the horizontal direction to solve it. So, we therefore know that A is again negative 9.8 metres per second squared. We still have the initial velocity u equals 10 root 3 metres per second. 
but the sneaky bit of information we have is S. Since we're looking for the time it's in the air, we're considering the whole flight, and the textbook's displacement over the whole flight is minus 50 metres, since it's 50 metres downwards. So now that we have S, U and A, and we're looking for T, we can use the equation S equals UT plus half AT squared. Subbing in values, we get that negative 50 equals 10 root 3 times T minus 4.9 T squared, which rearranges to give 4.9 T squared minus 10 root 3 T minus 50 equals 0. Using the quadratic formula, we get two answers for T. 5.4 seconds or minus 1.9 seconds. But since time has to be positive, we can say that t equals 5.4 seconds. OK, so now it's time for part d, finding the distance the projectile travels horizontally. This one is a horizontal problem, so we have the opportunity to use the horizontal equation of distance equals speed times time, since there's no acceleration. The speed here is the horizontal velocity, 10 meters per second, and the time was found in part c. 5.4 seconds, since horizontal and vertical time are the same. So the distance horizontally is 10 times 5.4, which is 54.2 metres. Now, you might ask why I have 54.2 rather than 54. That's because the 5.4 seconds from part C was actually 5.418122, so and so forth. So when we multiply this by 10, it rounds to 54.2. All right, guys, part E here is to tie it all together and give the final velocity the instant before it hits the ground. So for this one, we need to combine the final horizontal and vertical velocities. Since the horizontal velocity doesn't change, it stays at 10 meters per second. However, the vertical velocity isn't that nice, so we have to calculate it. Here, we're looking for V, and we have all of the other variables from the previous parts. So we can use either of the two equations that have v in them. I'll choose v equals u plus at, since it's the simplest. So subbing in the values we already have, v equals 10 root 3 minus 9.8 times 5.4, which gives us negative 35.8. Again, negative because it's downwards. Now, using step three of the method, we can draw in the horizontal and vertical velocities like this, with the final overall velocity here. Using Pythagoras' theorem, this velocity comes out to be 37.1 meters per second. Then, the angle here can be found using right angle trig and comes out to be 74.4 degrees. So, our answer to part E is 37.1 meters per second at 74.4 degrees below the horizontal. And we're done. In this video, we went through an example projectile motion problem. We followed three key steps, decomposing the initial velocity, using the SUVAT equations, and recomposing the velocities at the end. These, as well as the diagram from the first part of the question, are up on screen for you now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.